Can the Nothing Phone 2A convert a lifelong Apple user? Only one way to find out. As an Apple user of over what, 15 years now, and somebody who could definitely be classed as being trapped in the Apple ecosystem with, well, my Apple iPhone, uh, Apple Watch, AirPods, um, MacBook Pro, uh, iPad Pro, and um, oh, also my Apple MacBook. To be honest with you guys, I'd never really given any thought to stepping away from Apple for my next phone until this. This is the Nothing Phone 2A, which is available for just £319, considerably less than an iPhone. I have to admit, it's got me intrigued. So I'm gonna move my SIM card over and use only this phone for the next 72 hours, taking you along with me and sharing my experiences with the Nothing Phone as an Apple user. Now, a few disclaimers before we get into this. This is our first phone review, so I hope you guys enjoy it. And secondly, I'm not an Android user, like, at all. So go easy on me. So let's take a closer look at this then. And to be honest, it's the design that really drew me in with this phone. Plus, I do think that their marketing is pretty cool as well. The first thing that I've noticed out of the box is that it's so light, much lighter than my iPhone, but it still gives me the same vibe and it feels pretty clean and premium. Now it's got this 90 degree infinity back cover and on the back, we've also got three of the glyph lighting panels at the top here. And then this really cool transparent design, which apparently is shaped to look like a New York subway map. Though I have seen some of you guys online say that it looks a little bit more like an intestine but hey, each their own. Even little details like the packaging, the USB-C 2.0 charging cable are a really nice touch. I mean, something as simple as the SIM card ejector looks cool. Now, I don't know everything about nothing, and nothing being the brand, but I do know that they are very passionate about their design language, and that is evident from this. Now, we've got the main camera and the ultra-wide camera on the back here, and a front-facing camera too, and I will definitely be putting those to the test a little bit later on. Now, I know that I'm like 30 seconds into this video, but I do need my MacBook back just to talk you guys through the specs of this phone. So let's bring up their website. Okay, here we go. So this phone has got a 6.7 inch, 120 hertz, 10 bit AMOLED display that apparently peaks around about 1300 nits. Now it's powered by Android 14, running nothing OS 2.5 with a MediaTek Dimensional 7200 Pro chip. Now in terms of battery, it's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which they do say here lasts up to two days or up to 29 hours of video playback. So I'll be very interested to test that out. And although there's no wireless charging, with 45 watts of wired charging, we can apparently get a full battery with just one hour's worth of charge or a day's worth of charge in 20 minutes. Now this phone has eight gig of memory and 128 gig of storage, but apparently there is an option to step up to 12 gig and 256 gig of storage for an extra 30 quid. So that's all the key stats and need to knows out of the way. I'm gonna go and get this set up and I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. Okay, so first issue, and I knew this wouldn't take very long. Basically, I wanna try and create like a cool looking home screen, because I think that's part of the nothing experience, right? Like it looks a little bit different. It's about the design language. I want something like monochrome. I don't wanna go too mad with it, but I want something that looks cool. But basically, in order to do that, I need to get to settings. And I don't know how to get to settings on this phone. So if I swipe one way, I've got a really cool, like personalized feed of YouTube and news, which I absolutely love something that I don't have on my iPhone. So big fan of that. At the bottom of my page at the moment, I've also got a quick Google search bar, which I'm another big fan of. But if I swipe one way, I've got my apps. If I swipe down from the top, I've got like some settings like Bluetooth, Torch, Wallet, that kind of thing. But if I swipe, oh, you swipe up. <laughs> Makes sense, I guess. So if I search settings here, yeah, we go. So finally, after playing around for far too long, creating a cool home screen and setting up custom glyphs, which I'll definitely be coming back to, I'm now really happy with my setup. So after a couple hours worth of use, what are my initial thoughts on the Nothing Phone? Well, first of all, I absolutely love the design of this thing. I don't think that's a secret. And so does everybody over in the office. So big tick in the box there. Secondly, Nothing OS is actually really intuitive. Now, don't get me wrong. It has taken me a couple of hours to get up to speed with the Android OS and Nothing OS, but now I feel much more comfortable with it. I'm really, really enjoying using it. I think the only thing that I'm struggling with, especially from a work point of view, is that everybody in the office uses Apple, especially within the marketing team. So when I'm trying to take photos, normally I'll just be airdropping. We've also got iCal set up with all of our meetings in. So it's just like logistical problems at the moment, figuring out how I can go about making my life as seamless as possible now that I'm not using my iPhone. 
I decided to break up my apps with a few little widgets, including this pedometer one where the stick man moves across the screen as my steps increase throughout the day. Now I wanted to go for that monochrome vibe and keep it nice and simple, which I think looks super clean. Oh, home time. And I've just remembered I haven't got Apple CarPlay, have I? Which is really annoying. I'll do a little bit of research. Um, so there's a version called Android Auto, which I'm just gonna download now. So it actually says that I've already got it installed on the phone. So I might as well just open that up and see if we can get it connected. But how, I don't get how I get that on there. I just cannot figure this out. Oh, right. So it turns out that the car that I'm using doesn't support Android Auto. So I can get Apple CarPlay in here, but I can't use Android Auto, which is a bit of a shame, but just gonna have to stick with the radio for the way home. So I've been playing around with this phone all evening and I don't think it will come as any surprise that one of my favourite parts about it is of course the Glyph interface. I think this is actually quite a cool idea and it means that you're not getting distracted constantly by the screen on your phone. In fact, you can just leave it upside down and you'll recognise what notification you've just received based off of the pattern that the lights flash. Now I do wonder how I'm going to feel about these glyphs after a couple of days and whether they are going to be a little bit gimmicky, but for right now I am really, really enjoying them. So I've just woke up and I'm absolutely amazed by the battery life on this thing. I went to bed and it was on 46% and it's now on 44%. So here we go then, day number two with the Nothing phone. Now I'm actually really excited for today. Uh, I have got a couple of YouTube meetings first thing. I've also got another YouTube video to film in this studio just before lunchtime. But once that's done, we're going to take this phone out and put the cameras through its paces. Now, again, for 319 quid, I am really interested to see just how far I can push it. And as a photographer and videographer and someone who creates these YouTube videos, I'm also looking for ways to speed up my workflow. So I do actually use quite a lot of iPhone footage in our videos. And I'm also interested to therefore see if this phone is capable and if the footage is good enough. So I'm going to get these meetings out of the way and then we'll go and test it out. One thing I was thinking about just before we head out and get some photos with this thing is just how often I'm picking it up and how many times I'm using it a day versus what I would be doing if I still had my iPhone with me. And I think I am using this so much less than what I would be if I still had my iPhone. And I think that's predominantly down to one main reason. And that's because I've really tried to focus on breaking out of the Apple ecosystem. And so I suppose it's kind of got me thinking, do I actually want an iPhone or do I feel like I need an iPhone? Okay, so morning meetings are done. We're now gonna head out on a little photo walk whilst we have got somewhat of a clear sky and see what the Nothing Phone can do. Now, we've got two rear cameras that are both 50 megapixel, one of which is an ultra wide, and we've then got the selfie camera that I'm actually recording this on right now, which is a 32 megapixel camera. Now, I'm also really interested to hear what the audio quality is like out of this camera, so I'll let you guys be the judge of that in the comments below. And I'm also gonna bring along the iPhone 13 Pro just to get a couple of side-by-side -side photos, just as a little bit of a reference. But again, for 319 quid so far, this is looking really impressive. From my initial testing, I wouldn't say that these photos are the best that I've ever seen from a phone. They are quite soft in places and the dynamic range isn't really that great, but they are more than perfectly usable. Now, I've also included some side-by-side -side comparisons with the iPhone, including this selfie here. And although I do prefer the image from the iPhone, if you just want something that will take good photos that you can post straight to social media, then you'll have no issues with this phone at all. Now, I also did shoot some 4K footage on the Nothing Phone 2 and was really happy with the results. I did, however, notice a very obvious color shift when switching between the two rear cameras and when fully zoomed in the footage isn't really usable but all things considered and with that price point in mind I think we're getting a very very respectable camera performance. So hopefully you've all enjoyed that little camera test I'm actually heading back in now because it does look like it's going to rain which is probably a good time to talk to you all about the IP rating of this phone. Now it's actually IP54 rated not IP67 which means it's not completely waterproof but it has been tested for dust and water resistance. So I've just got home and you know what? I'm actually really starting to love this thing. And I think if I'm completely honest with myself, there was part of me when I unboxed it that thought, yeah, it's cool, it looks great, it's a little bit different, but I don't really get on with Android. But after having used this for a couple of days, I can really start to see the appeal. And it's kind of got me thinking about how a lot of us have just become accustomed to spending upwards of a thousand pounds every single year on the latest iPhone or Samsung or whatever it is, wherever you choose to spend your money, when in reality, 
We've now got phones out there from brands like Nothing that can do 85, 90% of what those phones can do at a fraction of the price. So here we are then, day number three, my last couple of hours with the Nothing phone. Now I'm very well aware that I've got to make my mind up in a bit whether I want to keep my iPhone or switch to the Nothing phone. But to be honest with you guys, this is a much more difficult decision than what I thought it would be. So now I've got the studio set up for filming, I am going to have to crack on and get a couple of those videos done. But I will also be taking some behind the scenes content that you guys can check out on our Instagram page and also on our YouTube community. Of course, that will all be shot on the Nothing phone. But once we're done with that, I'm then gonna spin the studio back round and I'll give you guys my final verdict. So here we are then. My 72 hours are officially up with the Nothing phone 2A and I can't lie to you guys, I've really enjoyed testing this one out. Now, to be completely honest, I have found quite a few things really tricky with this phone, but I do think that a lot of that has just come down to my simple lack of experience with Android. And I'm sure that any Android users out there have been laughing at my expense watching some of this review, but I suppose that's what 10 years in the Apple ecosystem will do to you. But I can't deny that Apple have got something right in the way that everything does just seem to work together. And there are some things I've really missed this week, especially everything just working seamlessly with my iPad, my watch, Mac, and so on. And there's just specific Apple apps that are just part and parcel of my day-to-day -day life. Then again, you are paying a steep price for that Apple convenience. Plus, there is a lot that this Nothing phone does right. It's cool, it works well, it looks good, and it's a fraction of the price of an iPhone. And so it's been no surprise that this is probably one of the first phones to tempt me away from Apple, but has it done enough? Well, the verdict is in, and as much as I really, and I mean really, want to say that I've broken free from the chains of Apple, I do think that I might be in too deep now, so I am gonna be sticking with my iPhone. But if you're considering the Switch, or if you're not an Apple user, then I would 100% check out this phone, or the model above, the Nothing 2. But as always, what do you guys think? Would you buy this phone? Let me know down in the comments below. And also let me know if there are any other Android phones that you think I should test out. Thank you all very much for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.